As COVID-19 continues to spread, the government must be in a position to take any and all actions necessary. That is why today, Ontario has declared a state of emergency. The prohibition of organized public events of over 50 people. All facilities providing indoor recreational programs, all public libraries, private schools, childcare centers, all theaters, cinemas that show movies and concert venues are closed. This order will come into effect immediately. We extended the declaration of emergency for another two weeks, extending closures of non-essential workplaces, restricting public gatherings of more than five people. Yesterday, we put in place a new emergency order to close all outdoor recreational amenities, including beaches, sports fields, playgrounds, and picnic areas. Effective immediately, everyone needs to stay home. This is absolutely critical. Hi, it's uh, Jeff Knoll here. It is just before six o'clock on Tuesday, April 14th. I am the CEO at Film.ca Cinemas and I'm a town and regional counselor here in Oakville. Uh, I'm starting off early this morning, getting my 20 year old son off to work at Whole Foods. He's an essential grocery worker. He has a shift today at starting at seven. And then I have lots on the agenda for today as well. I have to take care of a number of important business items. Today is the first day you can register for the Canadian Business Loan Program, which I'll be talking to my credit union about today to help keep film.ca alive. If you like saving money and love going to the movies, film.ca cinemas. Now, just like you, we're located right here in Oakville, Ontario, Canada. We have the best popcorn anywhere and we only use real butter. Film.ca cinemas is a independent five screen first run movie theater located in Oakville, Ontario. As a small business with one location, we're able to be more nimble to meet our community's needs. We don't just play movies, we also host a whole range of events and special screenings and concerts and meetings and fundraising activities. We're really kind of a community center uh, in addition to being a movie theater. And the big corporate chains that own most of the movie theaters in North America, they just don't have the flexibility to do that. So that I think it makes us special in our community. So here I am in the uh, lobby of Film.ca, looking very lonely and quiet. It's uh, about 6.30 a.m. So there wouldn't normally be people here, but uh, it's, been, it's been really surreal. You know that uh, the idea is you don't touch your face and wash your hands regularly and use hand sanitizer when you can't, and I do that. I think my 55-year-old skin is drying out from all the hand washing. But uh, I'm gonna go check out the food bank this morning and I'm just gonna take an extra precaution and uh, put on some, some gloves. So this is our, uh, our porch top food bank. So we have toiletries and breakfast items. Let's check out the breakfast items since it's early in the morning. Oh, it's not too bad. Got some cereal and other staples, some breakfast foods. Looks like there's been some food drop-offs overnight, which is uh, always great. I am stunned, stunned by the uh, generosity of folks and their willingness to come out in the midst of this pandemic and to uh, help their fellow residents. Actually, I guess I'm not stunned. Oakville's a great place and the people here are fantastic. Here's our, uh, our toy exchange. Lots and lots of books. The books are very popular. There's kids' books and comic books and huh, what works on Wall Street. I imagine not a lot right at the moment. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been kind of neat to be able to offer this to the community. My name is Chelsea. I am married. I've been married for 19 years. I have three children. Nolan is seven, Evelyn is five, and Luke is three. 
We've been living in Ontario, in Oakville, here for eight years. Before coronavirus, my husband used to get up at 5.30 every morning and go to the gym. And the day his gym closed was the day he started working out at home in the basement, in this little room, surrounded by the furnace and the hot water heater and shelves piled with life jackets and painting supplies. Um, but he's making do there. He's, he loves routine. So he's trying to keep a very strict routine. And then he goes up to the office and works for the day. Now he works from home in our home office. He's set up at an old desk with a very uncomfortable chair. When he becomes so uncomfortable that he can't sit there anymore, he'll move his computer over to a tall chest of drawers and then use that as a standing workstation. Today, I put on makeup. I probably haven't done that in three weeks. And I don't think my face likes makeup anymore. Either the makeup has gone bad, it's too old, or my face has just rejected it. I don't think um, I should be wearing makeup anymore. But today I'm on camera, and today I get to leave the house for some routine blood work, and I get to have a couple of online meetings with friends. So I thought, what better day than today to put on some makeup? And I've sort of enjoyed not wearing makeup in the last four weeks now. Well, good morning. I'm Donna Foucault, I'm 44 years old. I live in Oakville. I have been in Oakville for on and off the last 20 years. Uh, it's 6.47 in the morning. I don't put an alarm on anymore. That's just the time I seem to wake up. I uh, try to wake up a couple of hours before <laughs> my husband and son get a little me time in there. And I can see my school that I'm not working at at the moment. Last week was our first week working from home, working online with our students. And uh, it was interesting. It was not as terrible as some had thought it might be. Most of the students were there. Most of them are doing work. They're motivated. I'm motivated. I spent Easter Monday all day working, uh, which means I get to do some me stuff this morning. So I lay in bed for a while reading and I'm going to binge watch some TV. I've been re-watching The Office with my husband and um, The Mindy Project on my own. I just finished that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get to that. Hi, this is your mayor, Rob Burton. And uh, this is a day in a pandemic. We're gonna start off by going shopping for some people and uh, deliver some masks that have been donated to us by Canada Goose. We'll let's see if we can do things and film them at the same time. Sort of a one-handed lifestyle. Not as easy as I thought. A little bit of lawn care going on down the street. An essential service, as the uh, province has decided. Well, let's see, I hope that didn't make you dizzy. Uh, and I'm uh, pretty sure I'm not gonna film driving in the car because I'm pretty sure that's still illegal. line of God's promise makes this clear, so that all the families of the earth will find God's blessing in you. My name is Lori Miller, and I am at my home with my husband and four kids who are 18, 15, 13, and just turned 12 last week. <laughs> we also have a dog and a cat. Not much has changed for a cat during this pandemic. My kids all being teenagers um, usually sleep in, so my mornings are pretty quiet. It's about 8.30. Normally we would have had to be out the door 
by eight to drive my two youngest to school. <laughs> uh, so the house is still quiet. Kids probably won't be up until 11. <laughs> So here I sit with my coffee. I listen to Roz and Mocha 92.5, check the mail, check Facebook. That's my morning. So it's, uh, it's kind of nice to be honest. <laughs> what do you need in order to open things back up? A few things in place, right? You need to have robust nationwide testing in place. I've been in lockdown since March 12th when uh, our work decided that that's when we we're going to um, stay at home. This is my home office where I'll be on calls for the next 8, 10, 12 hours today. Pretty good setup, a lot of memories, different collection on the shelves. I think the biggest adjustment is making sure I've got to shut the door because before when I work from home the kids are at school. The reason for the bed sheet is to have a green screen so I could set up Zoom virtual backgrounds. I got tired of just showing my bookshelf. And so now I can have a lot of fun with different virtual backgrounds on my conference calls. I was really looking forward to going up to my cottage this summer. When our government asked us not to, to travel and go on the roads, I want to respect that. To do the right thing, to not be selfish, to respect the friends that I have in uh, the community uh, up there. I wake up. And for a moment, my life feels normal. My kids hug me. I hear my husband laugh. And I think, I'm so blessed. I get up and get ready for work. My six-year-old son hugs me for a little longer, hugs me a little tighter than before. Please don't die. He whispers. It's something he says nowadays more often than not. I'm a doctor. I love this job. To help patients, to not just bear witness to them, to their lives, but to help them with skill, with compassion, with understanding through the most vulnerable part of their lives. It's, it's incredible. But these days, being a doctor doesn't come without risk. Being a healthcare worker doesn't come without risk. Being a frontline worker of any sort, whether you're a cop, whether you're a firefighter, whether you're EMS, whether you're a grocery store clerk, doesn't come without risk. We're in the middle of a pandemic. COVID-19 has redefined our lives in fundamental ways. Hi, I'm Jenny Lockwood. I am currently quarantined with my husband, Brandon, and my two daughters, Mia, age three, and Amy, age four, almost five months. Did you have a good sleep? We've been more or less on lockdown since my husband started working from home, which is about the third week of March. And so I was thinking if this quarantine has really changed my life that much, considering I live with a newborn and a toddler. But uh, I thought about it and yeah, it, it has changed a lot. And I try, well, I used to try to get my toddler out with me and we would go out to either the library or drop-in programs. Oakville has lots of them. We don't go to drop-ins anymore. Or Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes, so we do them at home. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Every day we'd have a good one to four hour activity, I guess, out. So if not that, we'd even just go outside to the park or go for walks. And now with everything closed down, we're pretty much stuck with just going out for walks. Just get ready to go outside. Mm -hmm. You want to go? Okay, let's go for a walk. We do have our own backyard and space, but it's become a really small world. Mia, my three-year-old, I didn't think she'd miss things that much, but at least 
now she's used to it. But when we first stopped going out to things, she would ask, you know, kind of one by one, mom, can we go to the playground today? I want to go on the swings. We're tired of walking. It's only been like one minute. Tell us what you're doing right now, Jessica. I'm trying to sleep. And why is that not possible? Because... My double chin. <laughs> can you stop with my double chin? Sophie, can you get ready for the day, please? Can you give me Snapchat? No. So can I communicate with my friends right now? No, you have to get ready for the day. I'm ready it's for the day. It's a school day. But at school, can you I not communicate with my friends? You you my bed is made. Look, I'll show everyone that my bed is made. See, bed is made. Did you brush your teeth? Yep, teeth have been brushed. At school, I can communicate with my friends. What time is it? 8.37. Mm, see, the bell rang. You're already two minutes late yeah, for class. Yeah, and I already should have had 25 minutes to communicate with my friends. So can I have 25 minutes to talk with my friends? Sophie, you're in class right now. No, I'm not. This is not school. Why do we have to wake up like this? Because I want to be able Every to communicate day. with my friends, but you won't let me. She turned off all my apps, so I can't use any of them. Gotta love screen time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Me saying happy birthday to my grandma and my aunt because it's their birthday today. It's my aunt's 65th birthday. She lives in Australia and my grandma's 90th birthday. When are you coming, <laughs> Sophia? <laughs> well, we no flying planes right now, so there's her excuse. <laughs> Did you have a good relaxing birthday? <laughs> We had to wake up early. It's like nine o'clock to sing to her because she lives in Australia. So I'm gonna go back to bed <laughs> because I'm still tired. My name is Mike uh, Miguelita uh, Vire. I'm a registered nurse. I work in the clinic with my husband, who is a practicing psychiatrist. As soon as we get in the morning, of course, uh, with our um, mask on and our gloves on, we always start with the doorknobs. Even we don't have patients coming in, we uh, clean the surfaces. We wash it with soap and water in a dishcloth, and then we disinfect the surfaces with, uh, with wipes. We have to put the Lysol disinfectant in each room to protect ourselves too. There are cleaners actually who look after garbage and uh, do some vacuuming. People who might be dropping off mails and uh, some of them might be asymptomatic carriers, so we just have to make sure. I'm a psychiatrist in private practice, and um, I'm also a courtesy consultant at Trillium Health Partners. I work at the, the hospital in the outpatient department on uh, Monday mornings and Thursday mornings. Sometimes it can be busy. Even if I'm free of symptoms, I cannot be sure that I'm, uh, I'm a carrier myself. If I'm running a temperature, I just have to watch it. You've reached since the pandemic, it has been comforting for myself and for my nurse and my secretary and for the patients that we don't have face-to-face -face contact and that they don't have to expose themselves to other patients in this building. You've reached. And they feel comfortable and so do I feel comfortable doing assessments on the phone. Good morning, Dr. Vere here. This is your appointment with me. I will call you back, okay? You've reached. Sorry, there's no more room to record new messages. <laughs> it's 
it's Mike. Dr. Bire Sopis, how are you doing? Okay, you know that everything is done by phone now. You do not come to the office. Okay, and this is the number to call the 416. If you are on any medications, be sure to have your uh, pharmacy number ready. Everything is faxed now. Do you have an email address? Usually we have anywhere from two to about uh, maybe four patients waiting in the waiting area uh, but now with uh, the pandemic they just feel uncomfortable because they know that uh, it can be very infectious we have a lab in this building and the elevators can be very congested but since the lab actually ceased functioning and the main lobby downstairs actually has banned people from just sitting there it's been like a ghost town Hello. good morning sorry dr Veray. no I problem with something yeah no problem how are you today uh, I'm doing, today I'm doing well, um, but I'll admit that uh, the past couple of weeks I've been a strain. Why is that? Uh, you know, social distancing whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the adjustment to the quarantine at first was welcoming. The lack of driving and just releasing the schedule from the kids and not having to worry about school and making lunches and snacks. I welcome that. Good morning. This is your day every day, waking up and chillaxing in front of the TV. When is school starting? At 9. At 9. Guess what time it is? 9.21. Right. So let's start whenever you're feeling like it, okay? Yeah. okay and then we're going to go see Daddy. Yeah. That's his workstation. He is our essential worker. Okay, no problem. And my next little stop is in the basement where we have my daughter, Sophie, doing her first exercise of the day. She does three workouts a day with skate and fill. What does it mean? What does it have to make people more if you run your stronger? As soon as she's done, she will start school. So as you've heard from my daughter, I have screen time on their phones. So usually the next conversation is, why did I take everything off his phone? I still work from home. My work has decreased quite a bit. A little bit of background noise. <laughs> and I'm probably here for about a good hour or so. I work and then on to the next task. Do some Zumba in my basement. Oh, it started. See ya. Started painting a little bit. So, so far I've painted the front entrance. Over here, as you can see, the front entrance used to be brown, now it's kind of grayish. Today, I'm gonna to try and tackle this room. We're now into week five or six, I've lost track, and trying to find something stimulating to do is, is the biggest challenge. So come on, Charlie, let's go. School. Turn off the TV. Seriously, this is every day. Turn it off, we get into arguments. Come on. Let's go, can we at least? Get to the table, get your, where's your computer? Oh my god. And then we have this all around the house, banana peels. Hey everybody. Hello. What's up? So, uh, happy, happy belated Easter. Happy Easter. You're welcome. <laughs> um, e News. Hi, I'm Pam DeMoff, Member of Parliament from Phil North Burlington. That's sort of what a lot of my day looks like right now is talking to constituents, answering emails. Some of the concerns that I'm hearing are to do with how to apply for the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. Do I qualify? Also from uh, constituents who are still out of the country and trying to get back to Canada and trying to navigate that system. Also uh, the Canadian Electricity Association. Talk to them about their COVID response, what they're doing in Indigenous communities, talking to organizations that are, are working on COVID-19 and, and trying to find solutions when there are problems. That's basically what an MP does. People who work in long-term care don't get paid very well. Yeah. And we sure put an awful lot of responsibility on them. And it's sort of showing right now yeah. Um, yeah. the challenges, right? Any other ideas for the e-news today? Uh, I think that's a good start. We are already up to six. So I guess depending on what gets announced today, if anything gets announced, we can include that. 
Sure, it's, uh, this is the Cohen family Oh, cafe. you can start again, I wasn't recording. No. Hi, my name's Brenda, this is Isla, and we're quarantined with our family, uh, my husband Reuben, and Isla's two brothers, Sam and Finn, and our dog Roscoe. Morning, Roscoe. You want your breakfast? That's a yes. That's a yes. Morning, guys. What are we playing this morning? We've been in quarantine. Well, my husband's been in quarantine since the middle of February because of a trip that he took. Well, I made the mistake of uh, going to San Francisco and then once I was done that, those 14 days, the, the rest of the world went into quarantine. So I've been here for what? Two months. Well, the quarantine's been good for my, uh, my, my workout. What else do I gotta do? Spend an hour on this bike, think about how to solve the world's problems, or at least my own. Right? I'm a stay-at-home mom and a writer, so I work from home anyhow. So being at home isn't a huge change for me. Uh, the fact that I can't take the kids anywhere or go out or see people or help my parents or visit my siblings, that is certainly new. Uh, Ruben also works from home, so for him, he's just been doing his work as usual. <clears throat> Hello, it's currently 10.45, well, 10.46 now, and I just made my morning coffee. I will be checking my Google Classroom to see if I have any work that I need to do before my classes. And then if I don't, I'll probably just watch Netflix. So yeah. And this is Alexa, Hi. mother and daughter. So what's happening here? Well, right now I'm just practicing funny enough in the bathroom, just because I find it's the best acoustics right now. And I'm actually working on one of my favorite opera arias from Puccini's Gianni Schicchi. I go to the University of Toronto for voice performance at the Faculty of Music. And this aria, Lauretta, is basically explaining to her father and demanding that if she's not allowed to marry this man and get the ring, she will jump off the Ponte Vecchio Bridge. Why would you do that? That's not fun. It's kind of crazy all of a sudden, school just stopped and classes were over. I told mom and said, so classes are canceled now. And then a couple days later, I got an email from my dorm and Victoria College saying that we needed to pack our stuff and head out. And now I've been back at home with mom since, when is that? The fr Friday the 13th. <laughs> Friday the 13th, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing because you can take an entire dorm and put it in the back of a Jeep Cherokee. And I work in sales and business development in the travel space. The travel space uh, clearly is drastically affected by COVID-19. Part of a global organization means that we saw this starting in Asia Pacific, move to Europe, and now here into the Americas, I have the benefit of uh, being able to contribute by working from home. What about the day-to-day -day for you? I mean, your life would be more dramatically affected than mine. So every day I'm at the Faculty of Music at the Edward Johnson building and my life kind of revolves and is in that building. All my classes, performances and rehearsals for performance students and for music students or art students, it's kind of hard to do this kind of thing at home, right? Because I even have times where I've had to do performances and record things in the bathroom and just send them to my professors. So as a classical music student, it's always practice, practice, practice. So even though COVID has got us inside, I will practice in my bathroom instead. My friend actually has couriered me today a lovely, uh, colorful mask that she has made. And I said, look, you know, I had to just bling this up. So you can see here's the Gucci Pucci taking place over here. And here's some lapis and some gold beads. And I never did try this on with glasses, but... Very stylish. We're going to uh, haul out the beads and I'm fogging up my glasses, which uh, again, blessings and thanks to our um, healthcare workers because mm -hmm. darlings, I don't know how y'all do this all the time because 
uh, yeah. I mean, this has been like 30 seconds and I'm like, oh my gosh, get it off. You know, I just happened to bring a little something, something here. I wonder if you sound different if you wore this headgear that I made for you. Wow. Okay. Actually, I thought that would be good for one of your competition. <laughs> Dad, I'm not sure if this is appropriate for this opera, but I, I think it's quite funky. I'll have to work on something else. Mm, no. <laughs> Finley, have you been eating bananas? No. No, neither have I. Has Daddy been eating bananas? No. No. So we're gonna make some banana bread today. I'm in the kitchen a lot more than I used to be. Uh, I didn't, that was sort of my husband's domain. Now I'm trying to bake a little more and help out more with the cooking. So Finn has been pretty helpful in the kitchen during this time. His favorite is baking cookies. He's not as excited about banana bread. He likes to eat it, but he thinks to smush bananas or what? Abuse against bananas. <laughs> so Finn, what are you gonna do after you finish helping with the banana bread? Go and play hockey. Our gym teacher told us to do an activity at, for gym and he gave us choices or you could do your free choice and I'm deciding to do a free choice for hockey because I enjoy hockey. I have a hockey net and I'm gonna take shots on it. This has been pretty tough on him. He's a super athletic kid. He plays soccer in two different leagues. Um, he swims weekly, he is uh, he's a brown belt in Taekwondo, and he's gone from all of that to basically this. Well, there's the banana bread in the oven. I 100% forgot to mix the dry ingredients before putting the wet in, so we'll see how that works out. I think I've done this before and ended up with mouthfuls of salt, so... Fingers crossed. So this is where Finn does his schoolwork. He's doing some English homework now. He goes to a French school, so he has English as a second language for his class. So he's watching a video and he's gonna be answering questions after. And this is my office during the pandemic for the mornings. Struid and I switch off in the afternoon because the afternoon is when I'm actually teaching live. So during the mornings, I am doing double duty, momming and putting away dishes, making banana bread, making cookies, that sort of thing, as well as keeping up with any questions from my students and then prepping classes for the afternoon. Um, so I just did also receive a call from my vice principal. So um, he's helping to keep on top of of students uh, who aren't doing work, but generally most of my students are doing it. They're all showing up for class, which is really amazing. Banana bread! What are you doing? I'm at school. <laughs> what did you do to my laptop? Nothing. I'm doing my homework. You should be glad. What homework? Division. What's your name? My name is Rohani. I'm on lockdown with my family, which is my mom, my dad, and both of my grandparents. Oh, and I have a question. Can you use one of the strategies you learned at school? I did, but it did not help. Why not? Because <laughs> I think I may have done it wrong, or it was the wrong strategy, or it was a combination of two strategies which I do not think worked. Okay, I have a teleconference, so can you try and figure it out for yourself? Okay, I'll try. Good luck at your conference. Thanks. I played with my toys, do my schoolwork, and spend time with my family. Has it been hard for you? Kind of. How come? I don't really like the online schooling. How come? Because every day is a lot of stuff and everything's due. Not being able to see my friends. Well, I have three children who all need to be educated. So I try desperately every day to make sure we do some reading, some writing, some arithmetic. They are still taking piano lessons virtually, so we still try and practice the piano every day. You have a call at 10, but before that, I'm sure you can take a look at some of this stuff. Look, 
Fractions? You only have two sections left on fractions. What? They uh, have to do their schooling from home, and uh, that's a big learning curve for all of us. Are you learning anything, Finn? No, it says yeah. matching, uh, elevating fractions. It, like, let's say it says one goes into two, and it goes up by two goes into four. And it goes three goes into number four. And that goes into five, and then that equals ten, but then... I'm gonna forget. You lost me somewhere in there, but that's okay. Keep watching it. They miss their friends a lot. Uh, they miss going to parks and the movies and things that they can do outside of the house. So we've been doing a, a lot of baking, a lot of crafting. Uh, Isla's been building a board game. Uh, Sam's going to start on building an online game. Finnegan's been learning how to program. I myself am currently taking a writing course online, so that keeps me writing, even though I'm not taking on any new projects at the moment. This is what recess looks like during the pandemic. You said not three of them! Well, my first three videos didn't work. Ah, shoot. I can't shoot. She has a mic. Thank you, Sam, for not getting my mic wet. Yeah, I would flip out. Ah, shut up, Isla. Hey, I didn't get the mic. Thanks, Sam. So I'm going to take advantage of the possibly 10 minutes that I have while the kids are taking their recess in the hot tub. And I'm going to take that chance to do part of my online writing course that I'm currently taking. I've taken lots of writing courses just to keep up with my writing. It's a great way to continue to learn and continue to write. When you're a writer, you need to constantly be inspired to do that. So. Currently, I'm doing one on video game writing, which is way out of my comfort zone, but it's uh, useful for the business that we're currently trying to open. So I'm working on that while the kids are in the hot tub. Figure I can at least get the lecture read and maybe start working a little bit on uh, my assignment. So that's what I'm doing during recess. <laughs> Are you done my Zumba? What's going on? How is the hip? Hip is still hurting. That's life. What are you doing? How's the kids? I'm good. Yeah? I see you've not moved all day. Yeah, I've been I've watching been Sophie. Sophie. The boards. We had to go out and buy those boards because she was doing it previously on our bricks and she was getting shin splints. So now we got the boards right before Home Depot closed or before they got into that curbside. So she's in a Zoom meeting. That Zoom, uh, it's her coaches and about six or seven other skaters are all doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they're being checked. And let's see what my son's doing. Still working on that essay? Yeah. Yeah, how's it going? It's going good. And what is it that you're doing? It's another one on the Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper? Mm-hmm. I forgot That looks like called. your teacher's emails. Yep, they are. Why do we have your phone there? Because it's mine. Okay. Um, can I see your essay? Or Hold on, I'm doing something. Okay, what are you looking for? Another one. Another what? Email? Yep. I'm going for my run. It's a 2K only. I have a hip injury, but I still need to get out there and run. So I'll see you in a bit. The weekend. We received new shipments of essential personal protective equipment, including four planes worth of N95 masks. As we speak, workers are unpacking and validating these supplies so we can start shipping them to the provinces and territories as quickly as possible. So my day, every day at 11.15, includes this, watching the Prime Minister's address to uh, Canadians. Uh, for a few reasons, um, obviously in my job it's important, but also we often include this in our, our daily update. So watching the Prime Minister as he speaks, um, and, and, and then using that information to support uh, residents in Oakville, North Burlington. So uh, that's my day at 11.15 every day. What's the matter, Romeo? You're tired of walks? <laughs> Not another walk. It's only the first walk of the day. It's only the first walk of the day, that's right. But he knows what's coming. So this is Romeo and I on our morning walk. Normally I would be at the gym this time of day on a Tuesday, but 
my gym's been closed for almost four weeks now. So this is part of our morning routine now. Back from my walk, there's one kid making breakfast and the other one's doing their makeup. Hubby's on the phone. He's been probably working for like Where three hours call? already, Hubby. <laughs> uh, and there's two more kids who, as far as I know, haven't been upstairs yet, are still sound asleep. I have a quick break between calls. So I want to show you how I can turn my green bed sheet behind me into some really interesting virtual backgrounds. Seinfeld. We've got uh, Star Trek. This is from uh, from my cottage. Different uh, different memes. Parks and Rec. Other ones from my cottage, which I would very much love to be at right now if I could. But not uh, been asked not to travel, so I'm staying home. And of course, my absolute favorite is this one right here. So this is another ritual after my walk and get some breakfast to come down and watch the Prime Minister's daily update. Looks like he needs a haircut, doesn't he? I know that everyone is very interested to know when things are going to get back to normal. What are you doing? Solving this. What's on the computer? Uh, some Netflix. What's the show? It's prison break. <laughs> Have you done any homework today? Yep. What'd you do? Uh, math homework. Okay. Have you been outside? Yep. What'd you do? Played some basketball. Okay. How many seconds? I don't know, I just got this. Go! Nice. How much uh, work do, do you have to do at school? Not that much. Is it what, a couple of hours a week? Yeah. Yeah, and how long does it really take you? Like half an hour. Half an hour to do the two hours worth of work? Yeah. Why did you get a picture of my life? Did you finish your homework? What? Did you finish your homework? Yep. What did you do? I did some Sudoku and some tension. Okay. And what are you doing now? I'm playing Fortnite. With your friends? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hubby, what are you doing? I'm just doing the practice, and then I'm about to do a quiz, and then there's like a hand-in assignment. I'm also just waiting for my laundry. So this year I'm taking a gap year and improving my grades with online courses, which this kind of worked out best for me because I just have all the time in the world to focus on it. From September up until March, I was working as much as I could at um, film as manager and also American Eagle as a sales associate. Film.ca Cinemas, Oakville's favorite movie theater. Did you know that we have the ultimate snack bar where you can get almost anything that you want? And one of the hardest parts of uh, coping through this pandemic for me is of course the uncertainty around my business. The fact that we're closed means we just generally don't have any revenue. There's bills to pay and we've had to lay off all of our staff or most of our staff. And, it's very hard. I mean, the staff are like family. In fact, some of them are family. And uh, suppliers, you know, they, they need to be paid and the landlord would like to be paid. And we're all in this together, but of course it's very difficult. And, you know, as much as I appreciate the efforts of all levels of government, being involved in government myself, I'm just not happy with the rollout of these various programs. This weekend, we brought Parliament back to pass the largest economic policy since the Second World War. At the same time, we're working to enhance the Canada Emergency Business Account, as well as new supports on commercial rent for businesses that are hardest hit. There is the Canada Emergency Business Account, and I've been checking back on the website every day to see uh, when we can actually apply. I mean, uh, let's just check it out now. And uh, hopefully they told me Tuesday, well, this is looking, oh, we're not accepting applications just yet, but will be soon. Watch for updates on our website. You know, this is just, it's really hard with no revenue, lots of expenses going out. It's, it's heartbreaking to see this. You know, for a service business like us, the reality is that there's not a lot of options for us financially. 
there's this $40,000 loan that's supposed to be available to us through our financial institutions backed by the government. There's the 75% wage subsidy. And then there's a bunch of tax deferrals of the province. The reality though is that not a single one of the tax deferrals of the province means anything to us because we're not operating. We've had great reliance on hoping that the uh, federal government was going to come through with something. But uh, it's been slim pickings and it's uh, very hard um, to uh, see a future when there's, there's no help. Um, We've got some terrific guests and supporters, and so they've been buying film cards and such. So I, I mean, I think we'll we'll see through to uh, reopening, but it's not going to be easy. And when we do reopen, we're going to be uh, carrying a lot of debt. Uh, it's going to take a long time to pay off. So we're going to keep watching this. Um, I'm hoping this is uh, going to be at least the SIBA program, the Canadian Emergency Benefit or sorry Business Account, will be up today, and uh, we'll hopefully get that application in. A big part of my day is checking out what my constituents are concerned about for the day. This email tells us that uh, some of our staff at the region have been uh, tested positive. Uh, not that it's any worse than anybody else getting tested positive, but it's, it's getting closer and closer to home. Up until this moment, I don't really know anybody that has it or had it, um, but it seems to be getting uh, closer to us all the time. So I'm going to uh, spend a bit of time going through my constituent emails and voicemails right now and get back to some folks and um, yeah, another day, another uh, another series of battles to, uh, to win and people to help. School in downtown Oakville called Toraguchi Martial Arts, and this is our virtual sensei. Today we're, we're starting with uh, what we call progress check. So it's a 15-minute progress check with uh, with the students and their parents just to see how the family is good doing, see if there's anything that we can uh, do not just for the, for the parents, uh, but for also the uh, for the kids. Uh, see if there are stripes. Uh, here's another piece of our family. Okay, this is Saison. Right. Saison is somebody who, like a little child, requires mm, so much attention. My name is Jonathan Kenny, and I am quarantined with my beautiful wife DJ and our baby graphic and gray parrot, Saison. We are told that they have the intelligence of a five-year-old with an emotional temperament of a two-year-old, so uh, imagine being quarantined with this 24-7. But we love him. He travels back and forth to, uh, to the dojo with us, and this is... He just kicked out Kai. All right, monster, you gotta go. I got, I gotta go to work. Our day before coronavirus was a lot slower. We would wake up in the morning, have breakfast, have our shakes, our uh, our eggs. Uh, we would get ready for the day, get to our Friday school around. We'd work out. We would work out in the morning. You're right. We would work out in the morning. I totally forgot what life was like four, four weeks ago. Do you want to start that okay. answer again? <clears throat> hmm. well, we're busier now than before. Uh, small businesses survive based on the passion and perseverance of its owners. I'm not saying that businesses that are driven out of business because of COVID aren't working hard. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying that the success of any business right, does depend on what the owners do. But it's one of those cases where if I was to do it myself, I probably wouldn't have done it. And uh, it's a case of many hands make light work. I'm running all the programming and all the classes and I've got uh, somebody else running the, uh, the online portal and somebody else doing the administration and the books. And uh, it's the team that, that has made it easy. And we were able to go from live classes on a Saturday to full online class two days later on Sunday, and now we're uploading curriculum. We do the, this whole online program that we were able to switch into, and because of it, we've been able to 
survive. And one of the reasons why we're busier now is because we're doing our due diligence to check in on every single family. The fact that we have this audience that's constant and that we guys are up and running, um, I know it's been a lot of work, but it's been a huge element of normality and consistency in our lives, and it's given us, like, it's been the anchor, so it's been huge for us. And it starts at 9 a.m., and uh, we're not done until 9 p.m. It's uh, 12 hour days right now. Point your knee at the camera. Point your knee at the camera. Don't just lift your knee, lift your knee and pull it to the side. There, now kick to the now kick to the kitchen. Kick to the kitchen. Kick to the kitchen. That's a side kick, okay? Try it again. I know that the closest is our grocery store not too far away. Uh, somebody was uh, contracted COVID, uh, but I don't know anyone personally that has been, contracted COVID. Well, I'm on the road again. I have a constituent that um, called and needs me to pick something up for them. I don't know that they actually have COVID, but I, I know that uh, the gentleman in the home is not feeling well. Somehow the smoke detector in the house malfunctioned, so I'm uh, off to Home Depot to uh, pick up a smoke detector. Since Home Depot is no longer open, they only do curbside pickup. I had to order it uh, yesterday, and I'm going to get it today, and I'm going to drop it off at the front door. Having a smoke detector is a pretty important thing. I mean, here we are at uh, Home Depot, and I'm going to try to navigate this maze. But, uh, oh, and there's a lineup. So that's the other thing we're getting used to in the pandemic are lineups. So it's my turn here at uh, Home Depot. Hi. Okay, I have another order here, number 208. Okay, just uh, pull up around here, look around into number 12. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Allocated parking space number 12. And I sit and wait for my smoke detector for my constituent. I think my order's coming. Yep, yeah, he's coming right towards me. Hallelujah. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Good, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Take care and stay safe. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Well, that was a easy transaction after the wait. Nice young man. Got my product. Now I'm off to deliver to my constituent. My name is Sandra Edmondson. And I'm in quarantine with my husband, Glenn, my daughter, Lauren, and her boyfriend. Say hi, honey. Glenn was working at No Frills on the front lines, and uh, he had to leave because he had symptoms. So first things we do in the morning is check our temperature with this little baby. So, oh, and then I press the button. Your body temperature is Thank you, honey. 36 points. Yay! I'm freezing. <laughs> and I'm freezing too. This is great. No temperatures today. Yay! This is excellent. We've had temperatures for, you know, a week now. But not today. That's so good. I'm so excited. So I believe that the smoke alarm, uh, smoke detector has been dropped off at our door, which is really good because we had a big house fire last year. Um, some charcoal caught far, fire in our solarium, so we really don't want to have that happen again. Want to take a picture of my new shoes? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> he wears these awful shoes, and I hate them. <laughs> but he just loves them. Oh, oh, it's there. Thank God. We really needed that. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff Knoll, for picking that up for us, because we can't go anywhere or do anything. Thank you so much, baby. That's excellent, because ours, I was cleaning and accidentally smashed it right out of the ceiling. A little bit scary around here with no smoke alarm. 
We even got batteries. Yay. Thank goodness. It's such an essential thing right now. Make sure that you have your smoke alarms. These are the masks we've been using. Although we haven't been able to go out in almost two weeks now, so. Hey, Dickie. How are you doing? Hey, my cutie. She hogs. He's got a massive tumor, so that's not good. My husband's favorite treat during the quarantine. Of course. Yay. Thank you, honey. As long as you don't feed it with a broom. Yes, I will not hit it with a broom. <laughs> Quit flying around the kitchen. Very funny. <laughs> now we're slowing down in money. Money's getting a little hard because we're not working. And unemployment, we're gonna have to phone them today because they've been giving us a bit of a run around with not having the right papers. I've been doing about 50 hours a week up until this happened. Between my two part-time jobs. And now I do nothing, honey. He had to leave because he had symptoms. So we don't have an actual layoff letter. So now we have to figure out how that's gonna work. Hello, Daddy. You having your midday coffee? Mm. One thing that's been nice is having Dad work from home. Peekaboo, Pikachu. <laughs> he gets to have lunch with us. That's it. You got the edges too. I'm just washing it away. What are you making, Mia? Uh, what are we gonna put in there? We're making waffles, that's right. Banana waffles. You want to eat bananas on your waffles? No. No? Chocolate chips. <gasps> Chocolate chips. Oh my goodness. Mmm. I'm going to be sneaky again. Can you finish mixing the waffle mix for me? Last one. Nuh uh. <laughs> Remember, it's hot, okay? Don't touch. My husband, on the other hand, he's a project manager, so he would normally be leaving the house at 6 a.m., coming home at like 7 p.m., but I have to say that has been kind of a, a nice change. So he's he works from home, meaning his commute is down to zero. So he gets home sooner and he can sleep in a little more in the morning. And half of the week he, he's able to take his lunch break out just with us. So that's that's been really, really nice. There's some nice things. Spooky. Funny or crying? Funny? Okay, I'll take that easy. And you made a delicious waffle, she Miss Mia. And by this time it is 12 p.m. We've gone on our walk. We baked waffles. And we're gonna nap soon. So it's about 12.30 and that's when Stuart and I have been swapping off in terms of him coming downstairs and him being in charge of Finn for the afternoon. Um, we've talked about it regularly about how easy it's kind of been for us to flip from uh, going to an in-person kind of work to doing it from home online. So we're both uh, very lucky on that front. So this is where it happens, where I spend my afternoons teaching. Stuart works up here in the morning and he's a graphic designer and he's got his nice big screen set up. I could probably plug into his screen, but it seems like a bit of a pain, so I don't. So I bring my laptop up, I pile it onto um, three giant books so that my students aren't looking up my nose, and that's where I broadcast live from for my classes. For the first time in my life, I've been wearing lip gloss to do my job because I know that my videos are being recorded. <laughs> For some reason, that makes me feel better. Actually, my students have been pretty great. Uh, last week, one of them figured out he could mute me. I hadn't figured out yet that I could set controls on my uh, Microsoft Teams meetings. So for a good minute, there was a student who was muting and unmuting me, much to my dismay, but to the hilarity of the rest of the students. So I'm expecting an auto-tuned version of that to come out any moment. Well, I've just left home for my outing for the day. I've gone for some routine blood work. 
uh, due to pregnancy. I had to call three blood labs just to find one that was open. According to their answering machine, they were closed until further notice due to COVID. And I thought, why is a blood lab closed? We Don't we need those right now? It's probably the first outing in about a week and a half. And as soon as I decided it was time to go, I became immediately anxious, uh, scared actually, to leave home. And the drive here to the blood lab, there's hardly a, a soul on the road, and the parking lot is virtually empty, where typically I would have to drive around trying to find a parking spot. So I've just had to take a few deep breaths and put a smile on, but I still feel this uncomfortableness in my stomach. It's sort of eerie out here. There's a tension. Maybe it's tension I've created, but it definitely feels uncomfortable to me to be out of the house these days. Most of the people I see are wearing masks. I brought along a dust mask, but I, I didn't put it on. Um, it seemed silly <laughs> to wear a dust mask. People are wearing gloves. Um, it really is a different atmosphere. I actually don't see very many people at all. It's like people have disappeared. Because of COVID, the kids can't come to the midwife's office and they can't go to the hospital where I get ultrasounds and they can't go into the blood lab with me. Luckily, my husband works from home because of COVID, so he can watch the kids when I have to make my appointments. So as long as I can make my appointments around his meetings, then it all works out. So I've just come back out to my vehicle from the blood lab. Typically what happens is you have about five minutes to consume the sugar drink, and then you wait an hour, and then they draw your blood to see how you've reacted to the glucose. Now typically for that hour, you wait in the blood lab but the lab has determined that it may not be safe because of the virus. So they said I can wait back out in my vehicle. But it's strange going places without my kids. I'm so used to them being with me that I feel like I'm forgetting something when I leave the house without them. I'll just uh, enjoy some time to myself reading a book and checking emails until it's time to go back in and have my blood drawn. Now, uh, here's how we get ready for a meeting here in the home office. We stack some boxes and then we get the laptop and we put the laptop up. This way, when you sit down, you get to have a proper eye level. Okay. Proper eye level is uh, fairly important. Yeah. Now, you're probably wondering who my uh, uh, assistant director is here. Let me just show you. There's uh, the mayoress. <laughs> I think she thought I was talking to her, but I'm really talking to you. So this is how you go. Make as good an impression as you can make in, uh, in these pandemic days of home offices and uh, electronic meetings. Hello, and welcome to a pandemic edition of Oakville Matters. Coming to you from the home offices of uh, myself and uh, town and regional councillor, Jeff Knoll. If anybody wants to to truly understand how devastating this 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 virus can be, uh, pick up a copy, or I guess go online and read uh, a recent edition of uh, the Oakville Beaver. There's a story about Nadia Alam, Doctor Alam, who is an anesthesiologist at Georgetown Hospital and uh, also uh, works uh, from time to time at OTMH as well. And she talks about watching people die from this disease. It's a gut wrenching, very hard to read article, but it really paints a local perspective of how serious, how deadly serious this is and why these measures are necessary. I might mention, Rob, you made this connection. Not only is she an amazing hero, she's also the doctor that spearheads the uh, PPE collection uh, that you connected me with that uh, where we're collecting and distributing materials from my business. So she's uh, she's a pure wonder. Yes, Dr. Allum is really grateful to you for throwing open a room to her at uh, film.ca. What Dr. Allen pointed out is that there is a shortage of uh, personal protective 
equipment or family doctors in their offices and their private clinics. There's a global shortage of personal protective equipment. If I can, I'll skip eating and drinking. I'll wear it for case after case. And as long as it's not soiled, damaged, visibly in need of repair, I can keep that mask on for a long time. That day, I wore it for seven hours. Some of my friends have worn it for up to 12 hours. The day goes on, I keep my mask on. And then I get called to a patient room. His doctor, a hospitalist, she's amazing. She's kind, she's sweet, she's intelligent. And she tells me that he's 72. He's got poor lung function. He came in with COVID-19 pneumonia. And he's been getting sicker and sicker, needing more and more oxygen. At this point, we've got two options. Either he continues medical management and probably dies from it, from COVID-19 pneumonia, or he goes on life support. Maybe he'll live. My heart sinks. I, I know he sees life support as a hope, but the ventilator is no cure for COVID-19. There is no cure for COVID-19. There's a good chance he'll die on the ventilator. So I gear up. I'm still wearing my N95 mask. I put on a face shield, double gloves. I'm wearing a gown. It's hot. The PPE, much as I'm grateful, I'm so grateful that it's there. It restricts movement. I make sure everything's ready because this man is in an isolation room, a negative pressure room. Once you're in, you stay in until the job is done. The more you go in and out, the more that door opens and shuts, the more likely you risk contaminating the entire ward with COVID-19. So we make sure we're ready and we walk in. The room is semi-dark. He's lying on the bed and I can hear his horse breathing. His face is turned towards the window, towards a blue sky with cotton ball clouds. He turns his head to look at me. Something about his face, something about his eyes captures my heart. We talk about what I do. We talk about going on life support, what that looks like. I tell him about the ventilator, about his risks. And he looks at me and he says, so if I take the tube, maybe I live, maybe I die. I say yes. If I don't take the tube, if I don't go on the machine, maybe I live, maybe I die. I say yes. He looks out the window. And then he looks at me and he says, no tube. And I say, are you sure? And he says, yes, no tube. Doctor, if I die, I don't wanna die on a machine. If I die, I wanna die looking at the sky. I want to die talking to my family. No tube. And I'm struck by his bravery and his sadness. So I sit down beside him and I hold his hands. I'm wearing two pairs of gloves so I can't feel anything. I use his phone to FaceTime his family and I talk to them so that they understand his decision. And his wife is so scared. And his son is so scared. <laughs> These are the moments I remember. Patients like him, so many patients like him. Scared and brave. <sighs> Trying to make the best decisions they can in an uncertain and frightening world. <laughs> and I will be there with them. With each and every one of them.
All right, so I've got like a 20 minute break. Hey buddy. Mm. It gets real bored real easy. So we got to take breaks in the day to do a little bit of training so that he, uh, he feels like he's productive. It's almost like when he's not productive, he, uh, he doesn't do super well. And, good boy. And so, I've been working with him on this for on and off for a couple of months, but the, the isolation has uh, provided us a lot of time to do extra, so he got really good at it really quickly over the last few days. And, good boy. And so if we find that when we do this for, you know, even 10 or 20 minutes uh, at a time, he, he seems to settle down. He doesn't feel so, and good boy. He doesn't feel like, uh, well, he doesn't feel bored. So sometimes he'll go straight to his pellets after this. Sometimes he'll nap right after this. So um, we got to keep him active hand. Good boy. And I just dropped all the pomegranate. <laughs> Went upstairs to take a shower and my phone explodes. I got a few messages from my mom who's in Peru. How are you feeling? Uh, it's, it's really hard because now my husband is working alone. She is, spends the Canadian winter months in Peru from December to the end of March. Um, she was scheduled to come back March 29th, and of course, borders started closing, flights started stopping, and uh, her flight got cancelled. Shout out to Pam Demoff, who has helped me maintain a little bit of calm and giving me direction on how to get the information to my mom. She registered with the Canadian system, and finally, April 16th is her flight back home. Just a little bit of an issue for her. Um, she is Canadian and she's also Peruvian, uh, but her fiance is Peruvian, so he will not be able to join her this time and um, she will leave him alone <laughs> in uh, Peru. So Hola Maxi, ¿cómo estás? Triste que te van a dejar solo. No, estoy llorando. Because it's sad. So that's a little bit of a concern that he will now need to take care of himself out there. Do you know if the flight is full? Oh yeah. Raul will drive your car and I'll drive my car and then you can drive yourself home. That way you don't have to be in anyone's taxi car or anything like that. Do you have a mask? Do you have gloves? And what about wipes? Are you nervous? You may notice I now have uh, two dogs in the backyard. Uh, the big shepherd there is my parents' dog, Charlie, and they just dropped him off for a play date. Uh, we can't help grandma and grandpa right now, so the best thing we can do is get their dog out of their hands and get some energy runoff with our dog. My, uh, my parents just moved here about a year and a half ago from British Columbia and we moved them here because my mom has uh, dementia and we wanted them to be closer so that we could help out my dad. And we spent a lot of time getting into the different support systems with people coming to the house and my mom going to day programs. And of course now all of that is not happening. Everything's been canceled. So now it's 100% up to my dad to take care of her, which is really hard and we can't even help because we can't go over there. I certainly don't want to make them sick. So the best thing that we can do is have Charlie every now and then and buy groceries for them and drop them off at the door and 
To be honest, I think it's the hardest part of the pandemic for me personally, because my mom just doesn't understand what it means. She doesn't understand why you can't visit. <laughs> Running off energy. Um, so every time we see her, she's upset and doesn't understand why she can't hug the kids and why we can't come in for a coffee. And so it's, uh, it's been really challenging, but you know, we do what we can and this is what we can do. Charlie! We are still facing a clear and present danger. As long as COVID-19 continues to spread, Ontario must remain in the position to take any and all actions necessary to fight this virus. That is why we're extending the declaration of emergency by another 28 days. I've been checking throughout the day and it's still not up and uh, I'm getting kind of concerned because I do have, is there any sense of when that is going to be up for us to be able to apply. I guess the government um, decided that they would uh, get the major banks um, started first and the credit unions. Um, I guess there's been a delay in getting them the uh, information they need to set this up in their system. So. Hopefully the, the principle that we're all in this together will uh, resonate with uh, <laughs> our suppliers. The studios are my biggest concern. So my day-to-day -day life right now is like getting up around 2 p.m. because it's my sleep schedule is way off track, and then having breakfast, playing some video games, hanging out with my boyfriend, then buttering on the house. What is the biggest change you've had to deal with? I think moving. I went from North Bay to Oakville and having my own apartment with my boyfriend to living in a house of five with two dogs, and I think we are at the limit of what the government considers safe. And I think that might be the biggest change, just not having our own space. That's been a certain challenge, just because I'm very used to like having a certain routine. Now adjusting to another family, it's interesting, it's difficult, but they're a really great family. It's easy to get along with. Welcome to our crib. This is the wash-up zone. This is where the the germs get uh, eliminated. Over here you'll find the quarantine pile. Uh, this is the do not touch zone. Go no further than this white line. And uh, this is the, the airlock. We did have to leave quarantine to move um, home from school. We were in North Bay and then we had to panic box up everything we had and get down to Oakville to try and get all locked up and as safe as possible. So this is what uh, a house and a half looks like during quarantine. And So I used to work part-time in daycare and obviously all daycares have been closed except for essential services and we moved from my school town and so I couldn't keep that job even if I wanted to so that's been hard I've been kind of figuring out what to do about my lack of income because I don't qualify for any benefits from the government it's just been a hard couple weeks so this is the quarantine stockpile uh, not yet to be touched we leave it for a couple days just in case there's anything hanging out this is the quarantine fridge. Uh, we usually try and uh, keep out of this for a few days. Um, and then when we pull stuff out, it goes to the kitchen sink and uh, we wash up. So there's many steps involved. So I just got out of school. I was in school for uh, digital cinematography. At the moment, 
obviously all the sets are non-essential, so uh, it's watching movies instead of making them. And there's nothing that we can really do about that, so we're just kind of waiting to see what happens next, so. The uh, business of the town continues even though we're in pandemic, so issues like uh, tears went on dog waste and people wanting uh, town trees removed. Most of my calls, most of my emails relate to uh, COVID-19. You can access them for walking through. So uh, going out for a walk, um, going for a bike ride, jogging, those sorts of things are fine, but you can't bring, for example, a soccer ball. And uh, I suspect that's going to be the case for a long time. Uh, I don't know how they're enforcing it in other municipalities, but it is uh, part of the uh, second um, order that the Premier gave with respect to his state of emergency. I don't expect that's going to change anytime soon. We have no idea uh, how long that will, um, that will stay in effect. Probably the number one uh, constituent call I get these days is uh, related to parks. There's a lot of confusion around the parks. Can you, if you can walk through them, why can't you play with your kid or otherwise take advantage of the parks? But the fact is they're closed. They're, they're closed because between the first declaration of an emergency and the second one, uh, folks were not listening across the province. And so I guess the Premier decided that it was important to be very clear and remind people that the parks are, in fact, you know, they're closed. You can't socially separate while having a neighborhood game of soccer. The adjustment to staying home was difficult at first. We were very upset about some of the activities that we had to miss out on. Now that it's a few weeks past and everyone has had to give up activities, I'm enjoying the quieter and the simpler life. <laughs> Thankfully, my husband taught them to play chess a few weeks ago and Crazy Eights, and they love to play Uno and Skip Bow. So they're playing lots of card games. My kids love playing together. They love being together. Thankfully, we have a backyard. So they're out in the backyard multiple times during the day, uh, whether it be uh, each individually or they're out there as a group. Um, but they're out in the backyard as often as they can be. Luke, play it. take little breaks from each other or get out for a walk, then they can become a little bit wild. You can't find any. However, this is What's my birthday they pulled off mom right to the bottom? I would normally be flying between here, Oakville, North Burlington, and Ottawa, and of course that hasn't been happening for safety of everyone involved. March 13th, we adjourned until it's supposed to be Monday. We'll see what happens. Everything that we were doing, we're all doing from home. Uh, my staff are all working from home. In fact, we're uh, working long hours right now, actually, with the number of people that are contacting us about uh, different benefits that the federal government has put in place. I'm also really proud of the way we're seeing the federal government, province and municipalities all work together in a way that we haven't, uh, we haven't actually seen before. The other thing that I do, I organize the Terry Fox Run Sunday. 
was the uh, 40th anniversary of when Terry started the Marathon of Hope. You know, it's different this year. On Saturday, we did a Zoom meeting with all the organizers from across Canada with the Fox family, and we don't know what the run's gonna look like in September. It could be a virtual run. Are people going to want to be a thousand people standing together at the start line like that? Are we going to want to go to a Blue Jays game? My Toronto Rock season has been cancelled the rest of the season this year, which makes me sad. I love the Rock. I love sports, you know, the Raptors, they're uh, suspended their season right now. There's lots of changes. It's certainly a lot different right now. I'm just, as I'm walking, I'm noticing that someone has left. Ah, where is it? There it is. Uh, someone's left some art along here on the trail. There's Batman up here as well. Um, anyway, it's uh, strange times for sure, but we will get through this. You know, I, I was mentioning Terry and I can't help but think of the courage and determination that he had. And I read something that Terry said. He said, uh, someone asked him what he thought about before he went to bed. And he said, I try not to worry and I just think about putting one foot in front of the other. So as I'm out for my walk today, I'm gonna to be like Terry. I'm gonna try not to worry, and I'm just gonna put one foot in front of the other. I think all businesses are adjusting one way or another. We were actually in the process of almost opening a eSports training facility where the youth of uh, Oakville could come together and do various types of eSports events. I learn how to game and uh, basic computer programming and this type of thing. Now that there's a pandemic and people can't leave their houses, we have to say, what could we do that would not involve actually going and doing things in person? So he's taking it online and doing an eSports management tool. So we've been developing a platform that allows you to manage all aspects of your eSports activities. Uh, so he's building this whole system, which is keeping him busy. But again, as I say, it's the same thing. It's companies having to sort of shift gears on how they're doing things. So it's been quite interesting. And I have the extra added bonus of being able to teach Finnegan, my nine-year-old son, how to develop websites. So I think it's impressive to see how everybody's taking on that challenge and doing it in their own way. In the evening from four to nine, as if it's live, but it's on Zoom to do our full slate of classes. Everyone say, he's a gay fumakomi combination. That's a bit of a mouthful. Try it again, everybody. He's a gay fumakomi combination. He's a gay fumakomi combination. He's a gay fumakomi combination. Mm -hmm. Reach out, we grab. He's a gay fumikomi combination. He's a gay. I see this as an opportunity to, to change. Change what we do, change how we act. This is reality, right? and we have to deal with it. Do you have hope we will make it out of this? I know as a country we will, as a world we will. We've survived everything, we'll survive this. I mean, uh, as a business owner though, the perspective is a little different. I know that my karate school uh, will survive because I'm a survivalist. Um, I, I, I don't know what defeat means. If I will, I will adapt and change as often as is necessary to survive. I know that we will survive. It's just a matter of, uh, of time. In a year, 10 years from now, we're gonna look back on this and treat it as that thing that happened for a couple months in 2020. I clear it down, the arms will let, drop, right? And then I bang back this way, right? But because it's we're doing it creatively, obviously we're just gonna Boom, boom, right? I can go boom, boom, pop. However you want to counter is fine with me. He's emerged from his room eating chips. Long day of studying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Is the essay done? Opening paragraph. I finished the, what's it called? The, the graphic? Di the diagram. The diagram. Are you going to try and help her or no? Years, I, say, I haven't done this in the last 20, Five what is it that she's doing? 
graphs. Rational functions. Rational, Rational functions. Is minus t. That's hmm. what I put here. Oh, where's x? I don't see x here. I'm not trying to find x. I'm trying to find d, c, a, and b. Mommy doesn't help. Nope. See ya. making the turkey today. I think we're good. Because the turkey didn't defrost in time for Easter. Ah. Uh, yes. Uh, I see. I know that my mom has been grocery shopping for all my grandparents. She's been the one to go out. My grandmother doesn't have a credit card, so she can't order groceries. Connor's a little bit frustrated with for declaring another 28 days, but... My dad has been cleaning ambulances. He's usually doing road work um, for the Niagara region, but... They've taken some of that crew and put them on ambulance cleaning. So your dad's got one more shift tonight and then he's off for the next four days. Which has frightened him a lot. He doesn't want to get sick, of course. And so he's fading his breath, hoping to stay healthy. Are you bored? A little bit. Hey, Pan. Hmm. Looks good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might have to. We call it the Quarren Turkey. 99%. Well, it says bacteria, which isn't a virus, but it makes me feel better. close. And now I'll wipe the Lysol, or with Lysol. There you go. Just in case. Somehow we're just not keeping a planning schedule of what to eat for each meal. So the meal arrives and we're surprised and <laughs> we're asking each other, what are we eating tonight? And sort of figuring it out as it goes. So tonight this happened again. Um, and what's in the fridge? I see some tortellini, so it's gonna be tortellini. Um, we are for sure buying things with um, long expiry dates in the hopes of not running out of food. We're using Instacart and I think we're at a two week wait right now for food. So my next delivery is on the 25th. We're definitely short on fruits and vegetables. I'm looking into another service to get some of those delivered. We have beer delivered from Cameron's for free. So that's been nice. So banana bread number two, not going so well. Exactly the same temperature, same spot in the oven as the first one, except this time, this happened in the first five minutes, so I'm gonna try to scoop the top off and bake it for the rest of the time. It's only been in there for about five minutes. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed that this works. See, Mike, ito, opisina ni Dr. Virey, how are you? Nakalap kami, ha? So, tatawagan siya ni Dr. Virey. Gusto pa rin niya yung morning na appointment. You're not well. Oh, because of this isolation? Oh my goodness, okay. Hold on, okay. Since I've been working from home, I finished a budgeting course. Great. Uh, a business analyst course. There's a few other ones I've done. I've done like six courses. Wow, excellent. Despite the fact that COVID actually has worsened some of the anxiety symptoms of many of our patients, and this worsening is not really something that's, uh, that's sinister, but it's really something that's a common shared feeling for most people in the community. But uh, interestingly, actually, it has, uh, it has brought out positive things in some of our patients. You're very stable. Yeah, I, I, I feel a lot more stable. It's, it's weird, actually. I think the whole family experience has forced me to kind of be. I have a couple of patients, uh, father and son. The son who had been simply unmotivated and just lying on bed for many months 
the awareness that COVID-19 could be very contagious awakened the son and uh, he decided he wasn't going to have his parents exposed to the risk of COVID, so he volunteered to get their groceries and ask if he could do other things. So it has really sort of uncovered a lot more of my patients thinking about other things. Take care, uh, okay? You, you sh yeah, you too. Stay safe and healthy and uh, all the best to your family. Sure will. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Bye. Good night, bye. We usually would think that anything stressful can trigger or uncover a first episode of a mental illness. It's true, these things can happen, but if you don't have the genes for mental illness in the first place, even if uh, there are, there's uh, this stress in the community, it doesn't necessarily mean that the people who don't have the gene for mental illness will, will collapse and, and, and have and have an episode. But in fact, uh, it can also strengthen uh, a person's uh, coping mechanisms and in fact protect them. Mom, why do you the Christmas tree store? I know where to find it when I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, see? The, the, the plant likes it. Yeah, the plant is happy. Yeah, it's nice. It's green, you know, and it's uh, flowery, so. There's Jessica having some technical difficulties. Frozen turkey. Not, it's half half. It'll be fine. It will be fine. I'm making dinner. Did all the shopping. Are you done working? Uh, yeah. And what about your 10,000 step challenge? I haven't done it yet. When is that happening? Soon. You gotta put on your winter jacket. Mm. You gonna go with Charlie? Yeah, maybe. I'm just wondering, what time is dinner? Six. Yeah, we need to check that down. If your mom, her car is gonna be ready to turn on, the wind to turn it on, well, and maybe the, the, the battery is dead. Well, the okay. battery will be dead, so we know that already. That's happened like two, three years in a row, right? So the battery is gonna be dead. We just need your car keys. Do we know where they are? No. So if you when are you going to vacuum? That's your chore, right? I'll do it later today later today. And what's Charlie's chore? Dishwasher that's been done? Well, we're gonna eat that. Maybe you have to know the dishwasher. And Sophie, you didn't do a run today. But I did three workouts. Wanna go for a run, Charles? Charlie, do you wanna go for a run? Go for a run. Before dinner? I'll give you your phone. Do you wanna go for a run with Daddy? Yes. Okay. I don't like when you play like that. <laughs> Why? Finish it. May I please have Google? I will give it to you. Are you happier now that you have access to whatever it is that you have access to? Because for some reason you turned off my camera. Oh, I'm gonna have to turn that back on. I don't know how that works, you know that. Are you going for a run? You cannot go like that because it's freezing. Okay. And what, what's your next plan, Soph? I have to finish my math. No, I think that's enough math. I have an assignment due today. How about vacuuming? My assignment's due at eight. Well, okay. Ready for the run. Charlie, Daddy's ready for the run. You don't need your phone, right? Just a recommendation, a tip. Who's faster? I don't know. You think you're faster than Charlie? Yeah. Oh, okay. Destroy Charlie. Sophie's back doing her math. And of course, with today's drama, I didn't do zero painting. Nothing. Tomorrow might be a different day. There's no rush. And there they go for their 4K or 6K run. Okay, what are you gonna do now? Cause my conference call is gonna start. I'm waiting for it to be recess. Seriously, how do you know what time it's recess? It can be in a few seconds. It's recess time! April, it's snowing, sitting outside. Why the heck not? It's uh, <laughs> rules, a lot of rules don't seem to apply or. Oh, 
I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Middle of April and it's snowing. That's crazy. Charlie's not gonna be happy that he went for a little run. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. When it snowed that's April nice. 14th. It's snowing. It's so beautiful. Here they come. About 2K. I know Charlie's not enjoying this, but hey, say la vie. Gotta get out there. Nice run, boys. Keep going. One more loop and you're done. No, one more loop, Charlie. One more loop, Charlie. That was only 2K. I did more than you today. So a few summers ago at camp, Finn learned a tradition called rose and thorn, and that's something that we often do at the dinner table. Finn, what is the rose and thorn? Rose and thorn is your favorite part and your least favorite part, and your favorite part is called rose, and your least favorite part is called thorn. All right, do you want to start? No, thanks. Stuart, what was your rose and thorn today? My rose was getting out uh, rollerblading in the sunshine today with Finn and playing hockey. And my thorn is that we're running out of milk. <laughs> Finn, are you ready? No, you just took a bite. Um, my rose was spending time with Finn in the morning um, and making some banana bread together. And my thorn, um, I guess it just continues to be the overall situation, but honestly, we're just kind of used to it now. So really, I don't have a big thorn for today. It's not this garlic bread? Um, mm, I burned the garlic bread. So yeah, I guess that's my thorn, the burned garlic bread. Can you think of something? Yep, my rose is uh, playing outside with daddy, spending time with my family. Um, the whole day really, and my thorn is falling on my elbow, but luckily, my elbow pad saved me, and I still don't have a boob. Bye-bye. Are you filming? No, are you filming? Can we start it? Meet my potatoes in peace. Yeah, best part I think is that uh, we almost always eat together, which is something that we drifted apart from. So especially at dinner every night, every night, it was something that uh, it's just great to have it, the whole family in the house all together. Oh my goodness! That was surprising. Slow. <laughs> Slow. 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 Jumping. Don't use your body. The biggest challenge from a family perspective is just making sure that we all remember to keep the peace. That's it, no more? <laughs> Why are you kidding me? So we're not fighting. <laughs> spend time with each other, ah. uh, spending quality time with each other. <laughs> the best part, I think, is uh, the way we love each other, the way we spend time with each other. <laughs> this, right now, the little things really matter and you don't notice that until you're in the situation. Thank you. I miss the get together of the family. Doesn't have to have an occasion, but to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> to see Thank our you. grandchildren because they're far from us, to see our uh, loved ones who are far and uh, 
I want to go back to our ballroom dancing because that's our therapy, that's our exercise. But I think we're one of the lucky ones who can keep our job, even though it's risky, but it's nice to take care of our patients because we still want to help our patients and other people because that's part of our uh, responsibility. Things will change, you know, things will be different, but people will feel accepting of the fact that some of these things uh, we cannot do anymore. In fact, since SARS, you greet the parishioners at church, peace be with you, you know, people have let go of the handshake. Your reaction, my reaction to what's happening around COVID-19, the fear of death, the fear of contracting the virus, is a very normal feeling. The anxiety that we experience, the fear, the obsessiveness with which we wash our hands. There's nothing abnormal about that. So this is our normality, this time of our lives. And uh, this is the best way to cope with preventing the spread of this virus. Finally got home to uh, touch base with Michelle. We. Uh, do very similar things, but in two different uh, organizations. What was uh, your day like today? That exciting, <laughs> eh? It's pretty weird being in that huge community center, often all by yourselves, by when it's normally a beehive of activity. Well, it's a little chilly because we've turned the heat down to save, <laughs> save money. money because, yeah. Yeah. of course, we're struggling as well at the center because yeah. we don't have income right now. We don't have renters. We don't have people paying memberships. We don't have the preschool running, which gives right. us income. Yeah. So the heat is off. The cleaner was canceled. Yeah. And uh, we're looking at lots of ways to save money. Worked with a lady who's living out of, um, what do you call it? A, a storage locker. Oh, she had a place in a rooming house. There was some people who seemed a little bit sick and she got nervous about that. Right. And so rented a storage locker. So she sleeps in the storage locker at night, walks around Oakville during the day oh, and, can't even imagine. and goes back at night. So she's coming in tomorrow so we can get her some food and uh, connecting her with somebody we work closely with at the region. We did taxes for a lot of people today at the phone people in need. A lot of them were anticipating their refund, so they can't wait for the June date. Right. We've been doing a lot of those with a, an awesome volunteer, Eugene, who's handling all of them. I'm doing eight to ten a day right now. My bigger concern right now is people who've never been in poverty. Right. So, you know, a gentleman who came in last week who's been out of work for a month now, had no idea how to use a food bank, how it worked. So I'm more concerned right now about those individuals and, and making sure they get the help they need. A stigma free, no judgment. Mm. So the porch food banks that you're running at the mm. theater and mm. we're running at the center or Park Neighborhood Center, they're getting a lot of activity at mm. nighttime. I'll say. And I think that's people who are embarrassed to use the food bank. I think it's around 11 o'clock p.m. and uh, I uh, generally come back to check on the building late at night because we are sort of set back off the road and uh, want to make sure everything's secure. I also like to check on the porch top food bank to make sure that uh, there's enough supplies for the night and uh, see what we need for the next day and put that out in social media. It was something that just came out of a thought. Yeah, that was your idea, actually, um, yeah. We're typically closed for March break at the center and we thought, okay, well, let's go throw some bins on the porch. We're getting about 100 people a day dropping by and getting food, or books and DVDs and toys, but mostly food. I'm, I'm astonished. I don't think it's something that's ever gonna go away now because I see the need. Yeah. I think that this pandemic is creating serious financial panic in some people, and in some cases, serious financial need. Now, on the front of our minds is our fall fair, which we usually do in September, so yeah, just the crossed, effect, yeah. effect uh, the pandemic's having on our planning and what that looks like, and that's yeah. true of many charities. Our fundraiser in September, the Fall Fair, which gets about 4,000 community members out to, which Film.ca is our lead sponsor. Um, and Councillor Noll. And Councillor Noll, <laughs> uh, and my spouse. That's our major fundraiser for the yeah. year. Uh, I'm a little concerned about that, and, and yeah. uh, hoping, fingers crossed, that that will be a community celebration of coming together. Just might be in September. I hope so. Yeah, it just um, might be. That's what I'm, uh, that's what my hope is.
hopeful mind says. If we can make it to our fair, we're going to be great. And the takeaway is just how much community has come together and provided it has just been amazing to see and to be a, a part of that. You know, before I head home for the night, I thought I'd tell you about this. This is called a ghost light. This one isn't really a ghost light. This is actually a floor lamp that we've converted for that purpose. But uh, a ghost light is this really cool tradition in the stage theater industry. And the tradition in old lore that uh, all theaters are haunted, when a theater closes for the night, the last stage hand will take a single bulb and uh, put it on the middle of the stage. It's supposed to say the ghosts that we're coming back, that uh, you know we're not done, we're not closed, and uh, <laughs> kind of chokes me up a bit. But for uh, Film.ca Cinemas, this is our this is our indicator to say that um, we're coming back, and we're we're not going to let we're not going to let the coronavirus defeat us. And to the community, it is uh, our message that we'll be back. I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization while a review is conducted to assess the world. Grandma comes home, finally. Hi. Oh, my God. You made it. Someone got sick in the plane. Sick as in what? We don't know. Oh, no. Yeah. Were they close to you? No, no, we don't even know who it was. Okay, so let's clean it. Yeah. Days are long, the days are long and scary. The sun it hides behind the clouds, it's dark and gray. And I feel that times are always on my mind, but I can't forget what I left behind. You know, the days will get brighter and good. I know. All will get better, it should Cause in my head and in my mind Everybody's okay So look ahead, don't look behind Things will get better someday Just take a breath and you will see The world is changing overnight You will be fine
Christmas when work was boring And these things I take for granted all the time Appreciate both the good and bad times I see A future that's long overdue Will be the ones with the new point of view just fine. 